In this video, we review the Kingrune KP3S Pro. But before we get into today's video, just want to share with you some of the GGGGs for this month. Each month, Bob the Beholder picks some of my Patreon supporters to receive gratitude gifts. And for this month of January of 2023, I'm giving away all of my original Magnetic Fat Dragon game tiles. Created a whole video, so check it out here if you want to see the details. But it is a full both dungeon and cavern set. We have a $50 credit towards Terrainify store where you can purchase STLs, prints, or printed and painted terrain. We have two pledges towards the current relaunch of the old Libraris Kickstarter campaign, which is ending on January 23rd. There are two $25 credits towards LV427 sci-fi terrain. Also, there's going to be a Kickstarter at the end of this month, starting January 30th, with Antimatter and their upcoming box set for Deep Wars where LV-427 is providing an option of 3D printable terrain for that game. I'm going to be creating a video once that campaign launches at the end of this month, but for this month there will be two $40 pledges to receive the digital files for that game. Check out the links below to get more information and also to be notified once that launches. As usual, we have $100 going towards a crowdfunding campaign, which my Patreon supporters are voting upon. And then finally, this King Rune 3D printer is going to one of my Patreon supporters, Kip D, as actually part of last month's gratitude gifts, but I wasn't able to get this video out until just now. So he was chosen by Bob to receive this as last month's GGGG. Use the link below to go to my Patreon page in order to find out more information and if you want to get in on the chance of being able to receive any of these gratitude gifts. So King Rune did reach out to me and did send this printer to me in order to review. To be honest, I was a little bit reticent to review a, this printer because I had received a couple other printers that never made it onto a review video because the bed leveling was so poor that I told them I really couldn't recommend it. But this one ended up being uh, actually performing really well and so I went ahead and did review this. And in general on my channel, I don't give out reviews for products that I don't recommend. So even though I might have um, some nitpicks or some things that I don't like about products, anything that I do show on my channel, I only pick the things that I could recommend to all of you guys. So this printer is in the same size range as the Prusa Mini and I did a review video for that a while ago so check out that video here if you want to see that. But I'm going to be comparing that printer with this one especially in terms of the quality of the print. Now that might be a little bit unfair because the Prusa Mini is an almost $500 printer versus this King Rune is more along the lines of $200. So at less than half the price of the Prusa, that might be an unfair comparison. And overall, you are going to get a little bit more reliability and features on the Prusa, but I am happy to say that this is actually a pretty good deal. And as we're going to see when I show you a comparison between the print quality, uh, at the end of the day, this is producing almost the same level of quality of prints as my Prusa Mini. So that's a big endorsement right off the bat if you uh, want more of an entry level option for the mini form factor print bed of 200 by 200 by 200 millimeters which is exactly the same as the Prusa Mini. I think this is actually a really really good option. Now I did receive the box and it came in a pretty small box. It includes obviously not only the printer but also a little micro SD card that is how you can interface and put in your STL file so that it can print or you can obviously hook it up to your computer and so there's a USB cord if you want to do that. Because I don't have my computer next to my printers I do use the SD card and if I were to keep this printer I would probably get a dongle or an adapter to a full size SD card just so that I don't have wear and tear on that one slot uh, inserting that back and forth. Also they supplied four of these nozzles which I think is great and these are 0.4 millimeter nozzles and I think you can buy these readily on Amazon as well. You don't have to get the King Rune ones. They also provide a needle in order to unclog the nozzle if you want to. I almost never do that with my nozzles. Once they clog I just replace the whole 
nozzle instead because it's such a pain. I came with this glass bed, which is an upgrade. And also they did send me a flex plate. Now this is an add-on and you have to pay extra for this, but this is a magnetic flex plate. And if I were to keep this, I would actually replace it because even though the glass bed is ideal for just having the perfectly flat surface, um, having the flex plate to be able to break off the prints once you're done with them is a lot easier to do. I am going to include this to Kip who is receiving this so that he can opt to put this in if he chooses. But if you do keep the glass plate, just know that they didn't include a scraper. You might need one of these to scrape off the print at the end of the STL printing. I was able to unbox this and assemble it in about 20 minutes to the point where it was running where I was actually doing the initial tests. That's pretty quick. This was one of the fastest um, builds in terms of the ease of putting this together. Really, it's, it's just this one bar that holds up the printer and it moves up and down. And interestingly enough, the screw that moves this with the stepper motor up and down was actually separate from this whole thing. That's a different build uh, thing that I hadn't seen before, but once I was able to put that together, I went ahead and did the bed leveling, and there are five different points that it walks you through in terms of bed leveling. There are four screws here, traditional screws to level the thing, and I just used a slip of paper and adjusting each of the four corners. And once I did that bed leveling, I did print out a number of things, as you can see here, and I didn't have to re-level the bed once I established that. Now, you're going to have to do that with these spring uh, levelers eventually, but I was happy to note that after maybe five or six prints, it still was pretty level and I didn't have any issues with bed adhesion. The other quick thing to note was the instructions are a little bit sparse in terms of how to load the filament into the machine. And at the beginning, um, I just stuck it directly into the feeder right up here. Uh, totally missing the fact that there is a sensor, a filament sensor over here. It will beep at you if it runs out of filament. And so when I turned on the machine and went to make the first print, I got that error message and it was beeping at me and I was like, oh, what's wrong? Did I get a dud of a machine? But I did contact the manufacturer and they pretty much said <laughs> that I had missed putting it through this sensor. So I do appreciate the fact that there is a filament runout sensor. That is really nice. But the instructions don't show any pictures on uh, how to feed it through. And then it does come with this tube that you can use to protect that filament uh, coming up through the sensor into the direct motor drive which again is another good feature about this machine. So once I properly fed the filament into the machine, was able to start up the first print, no problem. All right, so that took an hour and 37 minutes. And I have to say that the Benji turned out pretty good. Overall, there's a little bit of stringing, but that's to be expected. This was at 200 uh, degrees, and so you're gonna get a little bit of stringing, but the arch looks pretty good. Uh, these spots here. There is a noticeable seam right here where it looks like that's where the printer head uh, started or stopped each time. So you're noticing a seam there. The lettering underneath turned out okay. It was a little bit messed up here in the first layer to the right. The Z isn't quite as clear as well. Just the 3D Benchy is um, a little bit hard to see but that's pretty consistent with most prints that I found. You do see that these spots are a little bit wavy, a little bit um, shaky but again not to a degree that's super noticeable with any of the type of prints that I'm doing. So overall, I mean, the quality isn't the best that I've seen. I definitely can get better quality off of my Prusa printers. But for a sub $200 printer, uh, this is actually pretty good. So I'm going to do a couple more test prints and see how they turn out. So this is at 0.2 millimeter height. And I think the quality of the print is pretty darn good, about as good as I get off of my Prusa printers. I mean, look at the lines are not that discernible. Look how close up it is, it's my thumb size. So 
no one's going to be looking at these this close up but more from this distance and it looks actually the quality looks really good um, and uh, the entire surface uh, stuck to the build plate which is the key thing about this so overall just really uh, think the quality is good so here's a t test in terms of quality between the two and as far as I can tell again this is from the Prusa Mini and as far as I can tell the print quality is just as good now there again there's a little bit of a seam here of where um, the print starts and stops on each layer and I'm not getting the same uh, maybe a little bit just right there and then when you look on the inside it's a little bit more discernible so even on the Prusa there's a little bit of artifacts here you can see um, the artifact is a little bit more discernible on the King Rune but it is so faint that in terms of quality I actually think that the King Rune uh, does rival the quality of the Prusa. Now these are printed at 0.15 uh, or 0.16 so it's at a higher quality and I think it's really hard to tell which is which. In fact when I go and paint these I won't know which one um, is from the Prusa and which one is from the King Rune. Here's another quality comparison and again I apologize because I print everything in black it just makes it easier for me when I paint. Um, so this is from the Prusa and this one is from the King Rune and I know it's not the exact same print but I think you would be hard pressed to tell which one was from which machine. These are tiny because um, these are meant for props for uh, inserting lights which I'm going to do another video for but yeah there's no way I would be able to tell uh, which one is from which printer based off of quality because both of them are really high quality. Now the um, King Rune did fail to adhere at this part of the print. In the end it doesn't matter because uh, it, the stump is irregular anyway. But just want to say that um, adhesion to the build plate isn't quite as good as the Prusa. But overall, I am very impressed with the quality from the King Rune. One of the other things I want to tell you is that this machine prints really, really quietly. The only thing that you're hearing is the fan, the cooling fan at the print head. But other than that, the motors moving all of the X, Y, Z axes is really quiet. So I was pretty impressed with the low level noise that this machine was producing. So there you go. This is the King Rune KP3S Pro. I am pretty impressed with this machine and am glad that they did send it to me. I am happy to endorse it and say that if your budget is low and you don't want to pay for that Prusa Mini, which again at the end of the day, my recommendation is if you do have the money, go ahead and go with the Prusa because they're so reliable and have firmware updates all the time but you are paying a premium price for that product and you're getting the auto bed leveling there where you're not getting that here but if you wanted a second machine printing machine or you wanted more of a small form factor uh, fdm printer i can wholeheartedly recommend the king rune and you still have to fiddle around a little bit with making sure that you get that bed level but other than that it's producing quality of prints that really is almost at the same level as my Prusa Mini. And at the end of the day, that's sort of what you want, as you notice here, especially if you're printing larger terrain pieces, there is no qualitative difference that you're gonna notice printing up these larger sort of terrain. Maybe if you're printing miniature, something super small, that has a lot of details, you might notice a difference. But at that point, I would recommend using a resin printer anyway over an FDM one. So go ahead and use the links below if you are interested in purchasing this. Again, it's about $200 US. 
and ships relatively quickly because they do have a US warehouse here that it ships from. I think I received mine in a couple of days. If this video was helpful for you, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe as some of these prints that you notice. It's a project that I'm working on where it's incorporating LED lights for some of your terrain pieces. Again, use the link also to go to my Patreon page if you're interested in having the chance of being chosen by Bob for one of the GGGGs. Otherwise, happy printing. We'll see you next time.